Let's talk about continuous compounding. Now we've looked at simple interest where we took a chunk of money and put it into an account and at the end of a certain period of time the interest was calculated for the entire deposit period. That was simple interest and then we looked at compound interest where we put in a big chunk of money and every month or every year or however often our compounding takes place the interest was calculated for the chunk of money plus any interest that had already been added into the account and so we saw that our money could grow even faster. Well when we look at continuous compounding what we're looking at is switching from where we were compounding once a year to compounding once a month to once a week to once a day, to once an hour, and smaller and smaller increments for how often we're going to compound. And so the number of compoundings increases without bound to the point where we get to the continuous compounding formula. Now there aren't really any accounts that use continuous compounding. It's used more in financial mathematics to make predictions and to see where um, the money is going what direction you're heading with it with so continuous compounding represents the best compounding possible and what mathematicians found is that the smaller and smaller the periods of time that you did the compounding, the closer and closer it got to this formula. So it never gets better than continuous compounding. The best possible, the best compounding possible. And the formula that we have is F equals P, that's all familiar so far, and then we have E to the RT. Now E is a constant. of exponential growth. And I don't know if you remember, but when we talked about the compounding, the general compounding formula, we looked at the graph and saw how it had that kind of curve and went up higher and higher as you went to the right. And that kind of compounding is what we're talking about with the exponential growth and then this E is a constant of exponential growth so it, we're using that to represent the growth that we see when we make smaller and smaller increments for the N or the number of compoundings. So we don't even have an N in this formula you can see we have F which is still the future value P, which is still the present value, and then E, that's that constant of exponential growth, and then R is the rate. Remember we have to convert it to a decimal. And then T is the number of years. So that's our formula. Now there's one other thing that we need to figure out, and that's how do we handle E. So what I want to do just to start and get a feel for this is think about e to the first power. It's similar to the idea of 2 to the first power. 2 to the first is just a 2 and similarly e to the first is just an e. But we need to think about it in this format with an exponent to use it on our calculator. So let me show you two, maybe I'll pull up three different calculators so you can see how we handle the e on there. So the first thing is I'm looking for the E and I see here it's right above the LN button and it's E to the X and that's why we needed to think about E to the first power. So we'll, what we'll do for this calculator, turn it on and then I'll do second and the LN button and it shows me E to the and it gives me parentheses. I just want to put a 1 in there and figure out what is the value for E. So then I'll push enter and I get 2.718 and it goes on and on. It is uh, 
E is a number like pi that when you get the decimal value for it, it goes on and on and never repeats and never terminates. It's called an irrational number, but we can find a decimal approximation to it. And so we'll say E is approximately 2.718, and then it goes on and on. So we know 2.718 on and on is an approximation for E. So it's just a little bit over two, nearly to three. Let's look at the other calculators and see how we figure E. So for this calculator, if I turn it on, I'm looking for the E to the again, and there I see it right above the LN key. That looks like a, a pattern there. So L, I'll do second LN, and then I have E to the, and this one is just showing it as up in the exponent position. I'll put in a 1, and then I'll push enter, and you can see that same value, 2.718, and so on. When you get that 2.718, when you do e to the first, then you know you found the correct e. Let's look at one more calculator. And this one, the ln button is in a different location, but it's still right above it. You can see the e to the x there. So I'll do second ln and it says 1 but I have to to do, because it, for this calculator you have to put in the exponent first so I have to say 1 for my exponent and then ln and there's the 2.718 so again for this calculator the 30xa I have to put my exponent first which was a 1 and then I do the ln and I get the 2.718 these other two calculators, remember you do the second ln first, and then you put in the one for the exponent, and then you get the 2.718. Okay, so whichever calculator you have, you need to know how to do E2, though, because we're going to use that. All right, so in five and a half years, you will need money for a down payment. You will need money for a down payment on a new pickup truck. To accomplish this, you deposit $5,000 into a CD that earns 2.5% APR compounded continuously. Now that looks like keywords that we're going to need to put into our formula journal, that compounded continuously. When it's time to buy your pickup, how much money will you have? And so we want to think, do we know the future value? And I think that's the part we don't know. We do know the present value. We're starting with $5,000. And we need to also know the R, which is 2.5%, which is going to be 0 0.025 as a decimal. And then the T, how many years? In five and a half years. So it'll be 5.5 for the T. And since it's compounded continuously, we can certainly compound for a half of a year if continuously has at every instant we're doing our compounding. All right, so let's plug it into our formula. So we have F equals P times E to the RT. And I know that the F is what I'm looking for and the 5,000 is the P, and then I have E to the R, which is 0 0.025, and T, which is 5.5. So I'm going to show you how to do that on the calculator. The very first thing I want to do is multiply those two numbers in the exponent. So we'll take care of that first. So we have 0 0.025 times 5.5, and I think you'll be able to figure that out on any calculator. And so instead of that exponent there, I'm going to use 0.1375 instead of that exponent. So then I need to take, this is multiply, and this is to the power. And remember, exponents come before multiply in terms of order of operations. So I need to do that exponent first. So I need to take e to the 1.375. So to manage that on this calculator, I'll do second ln, and I get e to the, and then I can type in that 0.1375, and then push enter. And then I'll write this down. There we go. So I have f equals 5,000, 
and my e to the 0.1375 came out to 1.1474 and it does go on and on so I'll just put dot 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 leave that sit on my calculator the last thing I need to do is multiply so I'll say times 5000 equals and my resulting value I can get my pen again F equals 5737.008 so I need to round it to point zero zero or point zero one so this eight right here will cause me to bump that zero up to a one and have one cent and there's my dollar sign so I have five thousand seven hundred thirty seven dollars and one cent and then my question is is this any better than the other types of compounding that we did on page nine so let's look back and see what did we do on page nine Ah, it's right here and I still have that on my calculator so we can look at it here we had five six five seven this is better five seven three seven five seven three six this is getting close but this five seven three seven still a little bit more and here was the daily compounding five seven three six point seven nine and this was 5737.00 so it's about 11 12 cents better for continuous compounding over the daily compounding so as you can see it is the best kind of compounding that that we have and so we would say yes about 11 cents better it was 11 or 12 I can't remember anymore okay so the big things to remember with this formula is that we do have an exponent of r times t and we need to multiply that first and then we need to use our e on the calculator to get e to the whatever that number is and then finally do the multiply here so let's look at the formula journal entry next and we'll have another example there.